ahead, son. Thank you. Aren't you hungry, Israel? Not very. That's something new for you. You're not sick, are you? No, Pa. I feel fine. Well, don't tell your Ma I bought them for you. You know how she's about eating between meals. Tastes pretty good, doesn't it? Ma makes them better. Well, it goes without saying, but she hadn't been making them lately. That's because Uncle Brian don't care much for sweets. Matter of fact, he don't care much for anything except for his business. Sure, I'm glad you're not a businessman, Pa. Well, so am I, Israel. That's something else you don't have to tell your mom. Looks like something's going on up the street. Shall we have a look? If you want. My boy, I trust you enjoyed the act. I don't know. I keep on wondering what would happen if you dropped one of the plates. <laughs> Plate breaks. People laugh and I try it again. Guarantee you wouldn't try again if it was one of my ma's plates. <laughs> Your boy? He's my boy. He has a very literal mind. Thank you. Paul? What does he mean by that? You no, know, that's something you don't have to worry too much about, Israel. Israel? You know, it seems to me you're not having too much fun in our little out. I'm sorry, Pa. I guess I just ain't cut out for city living. Well, neither am I. To tell you the truth, I'm starting to get a little homesick myself. What do you say we're going back and help your mom pack so we can start home early? I'm ready any time you are. <laughs> Take it that you are running for the sake of exercise and not because you are being chased. There's nobody after me. Well, then don't let me ever see you running again when it is not necessary. Your precipitous flight might well have attracted unwelcome curiosity. Yes, sir. Well, now, let me see what manner of treasure you have managed to collect. Come on. And I'm happy to see that you have learned discrimination. <laughs> Never rob a poor man. The jail sentence is exactly the same, and the rewards are not worth the risk. Did I do all right? You did very well, my boy. Yes. It does credit to your concentration on your lessons and my teaching. Did I do good enough so I can get meat for supper? A small portion, perhaps. But if you make another haul like this, I promise you that you will feast upon steak. Gee, I don't think I ever tasted steak. You will, my boy. <laughs> you will. Now, are you sure that no one was suspicious? No, nah, it was easy. Yeah. They were too busy watching to notice anything. Yes, that's an ideal situation and a novel way to draw a crowd. <laughs> Perhaps I should uh, take up juggling. What do you want me to do now? Well, I would say that you have exhausted your single talent for the time being. Get yourself a partner. Black Cat, perhaps. 
between the two of you, you lads should do yourselves proud and the day is still young. Shall we go back to the crowd again? No, don't be greedy. No, you've already harvested that crop. Look somewhere else. Yes, sir. And don't get caught. Hmm. A gifted chap. We've upset your life for the last month. Not at all, my dear, not at all. Five weeks, to be exact. It's a good thing for me to have a break in my routine. Best thing in the world. Why don't you make a fresh start and come on out to Kentucky with us? No, Daniel, no. Not until the coach goes farther than Richmond. My poor feet, you know. You'll likely be returned to the Virginia Assembly next year. I'll see you then. What about you, Israel? You'll come again, too? Well, maybe. Pa insists on bringing me. Israel. Well, I don't mean anything about Uncle Brian, Ma. It's just, there are no kids here. I miss the woods and the streams. It's lonesome. All you have to say is thank you, and I'd love to. Honesty, Rebecca. Honesty. Oh, sorry. Uh, madam, forgive a slight interruption. I am Dr. Thaddeus Morton. Humanity is not medicine. And I'm newly arrived in these gracious environs with my spouse and our nine children. Nine? That shares a lot of humanities. Oh, Israel. <laughs> yes, lad. Yes, uh, nine. And all boys. And what is even more curious, they're all just about the same age as you. Well, that's pretty hard to do. Well, not if they're adopted. Orphans. My wife and I lack children, so we solved our problem with children who lacked parents. And if this town proves to be sympathetic, well, we have plans to build a permanent home here that will accommodate a great many more children. Yes, you, you'll find the details in, in these announcements, and I shall elucidate on the program tonight at 8 o'clock, and I hope that you will all be there. Thank you. Well, uh, Doctor, this seems like a very nice thing you're doing. My wife and I can't be there, but... I reckon if you're taking donations, we can spare a few continental. Well, that's most philanthropic of you, sir. And uh, what name shall I enter on our list of patrons? Well, don't bother putting our name down. I'm just sorry we can't afford more. Well, I assure you, if everyone is this generous, the home is already built. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> I'll be at your meeting, Dr. Morton. I'll be there. Bless you, sir. <laughs> Letter for you, Mr. Boone. Good thing I sorted the mail before the coach left. Well, thank you. Well, Becky, it looks like we packed up too soon. We're not leaving just yet. But why? Well, at least you and your mother are not leaving. I have to go to Philadelphia. The Congress is considering statehood for Kentucky, and they want my testimony. And as long as, as I'm set for travel, I might as well rent a horse and get started, get back that much sooner. Gosh, Pa. Well, it's just two weeks, Israel, maybe even less. Two weeks? Oh, it's not as bad as that, Israel. It's hard on you, I know. But I'll tell you what. There's a fishing boat leaving for the bay at 11 o'clock this morning. Now, if we can catch it, you might bring back a sturgeon. So, I... What? Confound it. What's happened to my watch? Wasn't I wearing it when I left the house? I didn't notice. I didn't notice myself. Have it. Well, if I don't have it here, it must be somewhere else. That sounds reasonable. Well, I'd better go home and look for it. It's a very valuable timepiece. Solid gold. Uh, oh, <laughs> have a good trip, Daniel. Bye, Cabrian. See you in the house, Rebecca. Israel, if you want to catch a sturgeon today, you better go help Uncle Brian find that watch. 
You know how upset he gets about those things. Yeah, I reckon I do. Bye, Paul. Catch a big one. Sure could teach you to retrieve. Want to play some more? Jupiter. Ready? Jupiter, where have you been? Come on, Jupiter. Guess you Come better on. go before you get both of us in trouble. <sighs> Boy, around this town they don't even want their dogs to have fun. Hi, fellas. Want to go fishing? Two more weeks, brother. I'd stop looking for it. I remember I had it here last night. I was writing a letter, just laid the watch out where I could see it, because I promised to meet Mr. Stevens over at the warehouse at 8.30. Oh. Did you meet him? Of course I met him. Bought a thousand pounds of indigo. Well, then you must have taken it to the warehouse with you. True, then why would I leave it there? Maybe when you came home, you put it on your dresser. Then you went to bed. Ah. Perhaps that's it. I'll go look. Yes. Yes. I always put it on the dresser when I go to bed. At least I think I do. What the devil can that be? Yes? Uh, oh, I, I hate to bother you, sir, but, uh... Speak up, boy. What is it you want? Well, you see, I'm a poor, unfortunate orphan with no mother or father, and I was wondering if you're a kind enough man to give me and some of my other orphan friends some money so we might have a decent meal. Well, um, how much of a contribution uh, were you considering? Oh, uh, ten pounds. Ten pounds? Everything you say may be true, my boy, but it seems to me that when one is expecting charity, ten pounds is a rather exorbitant request. Well, you see, it's to build a new orphanage. Oh, are you one of Dr. Morton's children? Yes, sir. Yes, well, I met Dr. Morton a short time ago. He's a fine man, a most benevolent man. But I find it hard to believe that he'd allow his children to uh, solicit funds in such an irregular manner. Well... To tell the truth, sir. Aha, the truth. Yes, now, you're trying to collect money for yourself, isn't that it? But, sir, I really don't know the value of money, never having any. Except maybe a shilling or a penny. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Well, the truth is, sir, I'm pretty hungry. Doesn't Dr. Morton feed you? Oh, yes, sir. Except I miss supper and breakfast then. Oh, well, you just wait here a moment. But I can't wait, sir. If I don't get food pretty soon, I'm going to starve. You... Uh, huh. Come on. What was that little beggar up to? Ran off just when I was going to get him some food. I don't think he understood what you meant, Uncle Brian. Well, I didn't understand what he meant either. First saying one thing and then the other. Gosh, 
If I could have talked to him, maybe we could have made friends. Well, he's likely to need a friend. Did you find my watch? It wasn't in the bedroom. Oh. Kentucky, a guy wouldn't have to beg. All he'd have to do is go out and get some fish. Fish? There's a boat leaving now. Guess it's too late. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry, Israel. I'm afraid I've let you down. But the boat goes out once a week. So we'll try again next time, right? Yes, we will. And now, the only other place that that watch could be is at my office. Yes. Oh, now, don't worry, Israel. We'll catch the boat next week. broken pipe is worth very much. Well, what about the silver box? Hey, yeah, that looks pretty good. But if we want to stay off bread and water, we better get some more. Use the confusion method. Yeah, I like confusion better than distraction. Distraction always scares me. This box has got some kind of powder in it. silver is missing, you're going to jail. But I didn't even touch you, Silver. I'll help you pick it up. You keep your hands off that. Here, come back here, you. What'd you get? I got this. How about you? This. That'll be enough. Let's put him in the sack. Maybe after this we'll get some meat for a change. Yeah. Hey, Dad! Hey, it's that kid that helped us get away. To know all about the confusion method. I'll say. He's got a whole sack full. You're friends again. We weren't mad at each other. You mean you were just playing? No. We were working. Hey, what you got in the sack? Rob. For dessert. You gotta eat the other stuff first. Oh, you think we won't? You stole the stuff? Well, I don't know if it was exactly stealing. I just didn't have time to ask for it. Hey, he just like us. Well, we hardly ever ask for stuff either. I'm Black Cat Jeff. Black Cat? And I'm Hoot Owl Tom. Hoot Owl? Yeah. What's your name? I'm... I'm Copperhead Izzy. Hi, Copperhead. Join the gang. Wait a minute. 
Let's do this the right way. We'll eat bread and salt together. Now we're brothers for life. Come, come, Peter. You have a tongue. You have had the privilege of being taught correct English. All I want is the truth. Now, did you snatch the purse from this good woman? Not that I doubt your word, Miss Hinch. Oh, if there were only reason to doubt it. Well, Peter. Well, I'm relieved to see that you do not attempt to compound your felony with mendacity. But I didn't want to do it. Enough, Peter. Come with me. Miss Hinch, I want you to know that my wife and I are very grateful to you for having brought this matter to our attention. What will you do to him? Well, he must be corrected. Oh, it must be done. Though I prefer that the rod fell on my own back, as perhaps should be. <laughs> Whenever one of my charges is apprehended in a malicious act, I, I feel that it is my fault. I feel that my teachings and my example have failed. But you have so many boys. Yes, that's true. That's true. And I must find consolation in those who have followed my instructions so well that they have never been caught in any single criminal act. Ah, but Peter. Oh, how humiliating that it should happen in this town that we have chosen to make as our permanent home. Where even tonight, I had planned to appeal to the good citizens to open their hearts and their purses. I'm afraid that Peter has betrayed his future. <laughs> There'll be few contributors now. Oh, I'll say nothing that would spoil your cause. Better not to have reported Peter at all. No, you did absolutely right, Miss Hinchin. I must do the right thing, too. Uh, perhaps as the injured party, you would care to see the uh, correction applied? Oh, oh, no, no, Dr. Morton. Oh, I believe that Peter was sincerely repentant. It, it seems to me that he's learned his lesson. And as soon as he becomes part of this community, I'm sure he'll be no more trouble. Yes, if only he could be assured of growing up in a community where there are people of such kindly understanding as yourself. Oh, that would indeed be a blessing. Now, if... Um... I seldom go out in the evenings. I wonder if I could make my contribution now. Would uh, ten pounds be of help and perhaps make you just a bit more lenient with Peter? Oh, Miss Hinch, after what has happened, your generosity is like, like heaping coals of fire upon my head. <laughs> and the children, yes, they bless you too. Now, if um, you will wait till I hitch up the horses, oh, perhaps well, I, I can drive you Oh, I don't live home. very far from here. It's been a pleasure, Dr. Morton. Your pleasure is my profound delight. Oh. And the children bless you, too. Oh. 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 Come, children. Come inside, close the door, and find your seats. Okay, you stay here. We gotta report to Dr. Morton. Gentlemen, Chicken Leg Pete has been caught stealing and he's going to have to be made an object lesson. You're late. What did you have to say for yourself? Uh, silver. <laughs> yeah, now that's what we like to see. You boys are beginning to learn the value of things. I commend your selection. Watch out, Mr. Morton. That stuff's powerful. Powerful? <laughs> On the contrary, it's excellent snuff. French, I'd say. All right. Sit down. Is 
I told you, Chicken Leg Pete made a serious error, but just so that you boys will thoroughly understand, we're going to reenact the attempted crime. All right, Chicken Leg, stand out here. What did he do? He got caught stealing. He's sure gonna get it. I guess I'd get it too if I was caught stealing. Violet, you will play the part of Miss Hinch, who informed me that her purse was hanging on the crook of her elbow like that. Now you will be strolling up and down the street, looking in the shop windows. All right, chicken leg, show us what you did. you paid no heed to what I taught you, because you failed to practice. Caught! What mortification you have caused me by your stupidity. And for that, you will be on bread and water for one week. All right, sit down. Black Cat, come here. Why does he always have to pick on me? Now, Black Cat, this is a solo job. You want that lady's purse or its contents. Now, employing the skills that I have imparted to you, what method would you use? I guess the sympathy method. Ah, very good. Demonstrate. All right, Violet, stroll. What's going on? Keep still. Please, please, please. Not my sleeve. Here. I'll get you a handkerchief. Oh. Black cat's pretty good. Oh. It's all right now, ma'am. Excellent. Excellent. Just as I taught you. But that's not right. He's teaching you kids to steal. Somebody's got to stop him. Who is that? Here. Stranger, huh? You're not quite a stranger. I met you on the street by the coach, but I didn't get your name. It's Boone, Israel Boone. But you told me in Hoot Owl you were Copperhead Izzy. That was just a play name. You and Hoot Owl, eh? So you're the ones who brought him here, hmm? In violation of my absolute rule, never mingle with strangers. Hoot Owl, up front. Now, for introducing a stranger into our midst, you will both receive a sound thrashing. And you will be put on bread and water, not for one week, but for one month. But Dr. Morton, he's just like one of us. He stole food for us. I didn't say I stole it. I said I just didn't have time to ask for it. <laughs> That's what we all say. <laughs> now, let's see what you have here. Two empty jars and a salt shaker. It isn't worth a farthing. We ate up the part that was worth something. Lots of stuff. In any case, you're a sneak. And you will be treated accordingly. Hey, that's my Uncle Brian's. Give it to me. It's my snuff box now. I shall think up your punishment tomorrow. Tomorrow? You can't keep me prisoner. You can't keep any of these kids prisoner. This is my family. And because you joined them of your own free will, you will become part of my family, too. Violet, lock the doors. Uncle Brian, is that you? Oh, what a day. Goodness, I didn't expect you back so soon. They think the fishing boat came home to leave me. Missed the boat. I've been at the warehouse looking for that confounded watch of mine. It's not there. It's not here. Uh, Israel go with you? Israel? He was here when I left. He's out playing, I expect. Where is that blasted watch of mine? I wish I knew. I wish I knew what happened to our food. I could swear I left a roasting pull in the middle of that table.
And there's a loaf of bread missing. Well, I've looked everywhere I can think of. I must have just plain lost it out of my pocket. Someone's dumped flour all over the place. Well, it has my initials on it. So if an honest man should find it... Israel! Israel! It's not in there, Rebecca. We scoured the place. Israel! Things just don't vanish without a reason. I suppose Israel can explain it when he gets home. No, Israel couldn't find it either. Hey, oh, where the devil's my snuff box? I always keep it right here. Of course, I did move things around looking for that confounded watch of mine. And, and that, that silver piece, the one that belonged to your Aunt Mary. That's gone. We always have it here. this long unless something's happened to him. And why did he go off and leave his coat hanging in the hall? Now, Rebecca, you know how boys are. They get interested in something and lose all track of time. And he doesn't have a watch. Watch a hole. Uncle Brian, how disappointed was Israel in not going fishing? Well, it's hard to say. I think he was more disappointed in me. I didn't keep my promise to him. Why? All that food missing. And he was longing to go home to Kentucky. Oh, I see what you mean. You think he packed up and headed west? No. No, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't run away. It's impossible. Well, it's not impossible at all. He didn't like it here. I disappointed him. It's the most logical thing in the world. He had to show his disapproval of me, so he packed up and left. Well, there's just one thing wrong with that. I hadn't disappointed him. And he wouldn't hurt me just to get back at you. You're quite right, my dear. Quite right. No, he'd never do a thing like that. There must be some other explanation. He could have been carried off by force. It happens all the time. Kidnapped? Well, I was just exploring the possibilities of process of elimination. Might arrive at a solution. Suppose someone saw you leave the house and thought the place was empty. They came in to burglarize the house, and Israel caught them in the act. Very sound, Rebecca. Very sound. It fits all the facts, and it explains my missing snuff box. Now, 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 my dear. No time for that. Time for action. Yes. I'll go and see the bailiff. I'll tell him what you think, and we'll post a reward for Israel's return. Well, I'm going with you. No, no, no. No need for that. It'll just upset you all the more. I couldn't possibly be more upset than I am now. But the, the boy might come back while we're gone. If he does, he'll stay. And I'll go out of my mind if I have to sit here and wait by myself. Oh. But don't you fellas know it's wrong to steal? Sure we know it's wrong. But we have to. We gotta earn our keep. How did old Martin get you in the first place? Nobody else wanted us. We got signed over to him and his wife, legal. So if we try to run away, he can always get us back. And he's such a smooth talker, nobody ever suspects anything. Kind of think of something. My pa gets captured by the Indians, he always gets away. I feel a lot better if we could escape without any help. But I guess it doesn't matter much anyway. We'll escape in a few days. How? There are going to be people looking for me. Sooner or later, they'll look in this barn. Sure, it's going to be embarrassing. How can I face Paul when I can't even escape from a barn? You don't need to worry about that. And you got an idea? I got an idea. You don't know what's going on yet. But if Dr. Morton is planning on raising money for a permanent home... You mean he's just planning to raise money? What we swipe is nothing to what he gets. We're just bait. He goes to those meetings and makes speeches about us poor orphans. My Uncle Brian was planning on going to that meeting. There's only some way I could get word to him. That's it! Ah, 
right. Round up the boys. All right. All right, everybody in the wagon. We're all packed up. Up you go and be careful. Uh, there you go. Careful. As I told you, you joined us of your own free will. You're now one of our children. You want to go with the rest of the boys, don't you? All right, in you go. Now, mind your feet. Thaddeus, I'm still worried about people looking for that boy. I think we ought to leave right now. We can drop him a few miles from town. Uh, and by the time he gets back, we'll be safe. No, no, my dear, never lose confidence. Maybe I can get a message, Uncle Brian. I know where his watch went now. Dr. Morton took it this morning. Is this the trunk with all the loot? Yeah, but it's no use. Dr. Morton's got the key. Well, he was teaching you to pick pockets. Didn't he ever teach you to pick locks? Yeah, but I need a tool, a wire or a hairpin. I have a knife. No, I need something that bends. for that meeting, drive the wagon into that patch of woods south of town. And then if anything goes wrong, the people will be looking for me here and we'll simply vanish into the night. Boy, if Dr. Morton catches me at this, we're in big trouble. You want to escape, don't you? Why else do you think I'm doing this? It's solid gold. It has the initials BB on it. Here it is. Now what? Now we employ the confusion method. Well, adieu, my dear. I'll see you in the Sylvan Glade, my pockets lined with gold. What's that racket? What's all that noise going on in there? Be quiet! a suspicion that you're at the bottom of all this. <laughs> I haven't time to deal with you now, but I'll let you amuse yourself imagining what the punishment I'm going to mete out will be. <laughs> and I warn the rest of you, if there is any more trouble, you'll each one of you receive a sound thrashing, no matter who the culprit may be. be on your way. Did you get it? Well, did you get it? Now, this might not work. We have a chance. I don't know what else we can do. We've posted the reward. People are out looking. I can't understand why there's no word from the bailiff yet. Well, there must be some answer. If only we could find it. Well, we've tried everything. And we don't have an answer yet. The thing I don't understand is the missing food. If there was a thief in the house and Israel walked in on him, why would he take time to rob the pantry? Well, it could have been he was hungry. Israel could have walked in on robbing the pantry. Logical, my dear. Very logical. We know there was someone else in this house besides Israel. Israel would never steal. Food. Food. Rebecca, before I went to the warehouse, there was this beggar boy came to the door. A beggar boy? Yes, I remember him distinctly. He was an orphan, 
about Israel's age. Uncle Brian, you never mentioned this before. Well, it slipped my mind, and I didn't think it was important. Oh, please, Uncle Brian. What did he look like? What did he want? Well, he, he wanted money for the orphanage. Ooh, he wanted this, he wanted that, ten pounds, a shilling, old clothes. He finally even asked me for food. Did you give it to him? Well, I was going to, and all of a sudden he ran away. Did Israel hear this? Well, I'm not sure. You see, he was looking for my watch, and... Oh, wait. He must have heard something, because he said the boy didn't understand me. That could be the reason he took the food. He took the food for the boy at the orphanage. Yes, but he should be back by now. It isn't that far. Well, he, he stayed. He made friends with the boy, and he forgot about the time. Wasn't Dr. Morton holding a meeting tonight? Yes, 8 o'clock. I planned to attend until Israel got lost. Well, you're still going to attend. Well, there's no point in it now. Besides, I wouldn't leave you here alone. Of course there's a point in it. Don't you see, if he took food to that boy, Dr. Morton may have seen him. Good heavens, you may be right. 8.45. All right, Rebecca. I'll go to the meeting. And if I miss Dr. Morton in the meeting, I'll find him later. Where are those orphans now? In that old barn just north of town. Oh, I think I'll go out there. Israel may have found himself some friends. Yes. I can see by your expressions that your hearts have been touched. That your sympathies are with those homeless waifs who even now are sleeping under a roof designed to shelter cattle. They have wandered like the, like the beasts in the woods with only my wife and myself to serve as their shepherds. <laughs> but they need more. They need a community of upright people like yourselves, men and women who can give them examples of honesty and industry and, and generosity. Generosity must come first before all of those other blessings can follow. And so as I pass among you, I beg you to consider that my hat is simply a, a safe repository from which your benevolence may pay dividends for generations to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. That's very good of you. You know, you are buying the ground on which those children are now sleeping. Thank you. And in place of that miserable hovel in which they live now, thank you. Bless you. You are building a temple to human kindness where not only these orphans, but many other orphans in years to come may go and seek shelter from the storms of life. Oh, what joy you people give me. I, I just could weep. I really could. You know, there are no words to express my gratitude. Thank you. But you will hear it in the voices of the children. And I must go now and, and let them know of their great good fortune. And I beg of you all to appoint a trustee of your own choosing from among yourselves with whom I may deposit these funds in the morning. I wasn't sure I'd make it in time. Well, you oh. were spared my speech, but it's not too late to uh, make a donation. <laughs> oh. Yes, of course. But uh, I, I really came here on another matter. Now, most of you... Already know that my grandnephew, Israel Boone, is missing, and I have offered a reward for his return. You uh, met him at the coach this morning. Oh, yes, morning. yes, yes. It must be very, very terrible for you and your contribution, sir. Well, That's a very you know, handsome one. He'd been at loose ends uh, and lonesome, being a stranger here, and I thought he might have struck up an acquaintance with one of your orphans. Well, I, I really don't know anything about that, but when I get back, I'll rouse them and ask yes. <laughs> your contribution. Uh, uh, yes. What is it? I was just looking at your watch chain. I have one exactly like that. Oh, very coincidental, your contribution, sir. What I mean is, I had one just like it, and I lost it. And the first time I missed it was right after talking to you this morning. Well, well my wife will be expecting me now. This is my watch. My initials were great. After him. He's a thief. He's robbed us all. Get him. Captain.
We're after Dr. Morton. He's a scoundrel, a thief. He stole my watch. Then he's got Israel. I found his handkerchief in the barn. Don't waste time. wagon isn't going anywhere. What's that noise? What's going on in there? Uh, uh, I knocked over the benches all. Well, sit down and stay put. I don't want to hear another sound out of any of you. Yes, ma'am. Gotta loosen these bolts. It's coming, it's coming. The bolts are loose. It's Dr. Morton, and he's running fast. What happened? Moon back, he double-crossed me. You mean they're going to come after us? Yes. Yes. Now, get up here. When I get him, I'll wring his neck. What did he do? He switched watches on me. Just when I had this town in the palm of my hand, but there's no time to talk about that. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Stop crying. Oh, is the game You're not hurt, but somebody's going to be. This is that boom brat's doing. Oh, I'm going to give him the thrashing of his life. And you too. You too. You think that you can outsmart Thaddeus Morton and get away with it, do you? Oh, you cursed little pups. Wait till I get my hands on you. All right, come up here, all of you. Come on up here. Boom. Boone, where are you? Come up here. I'm going to teach you a lesson that you... Stop where you are, Martin. Israel! Oh, Israel. Oh. Oh. Hi, Ma. These are my friends. Black Cat Jack, Hoot Owl Tom, Chicken Leg Pete, and I'm Copperhead Izzy. <laughs> Copperhead Izzy? <laughs> Come on in there. Now that's quite a story, isn't it? But are you sure you didn't stretch it just a bit? Honest, Pa, that's a whole plane trip. You can ask Ma or Uncle Brian. It's true, as impossible as it may seem. Yes, I'll vouch for the story. And thanks to your son, my grandnephew, I am now trustee of a home for boys. Well, Uncle Brian, it's just my guess that that's going to keep you busy for quite a while. <laughs> no doubt. But it has its rewards. You see, Daniel, I never realized till now what an empty life I've led. And I can thank Israel for that, too. You have to thank me, Uncle Brian. The way was lots of fun. I think we can do without that kind of fun. Well, it looks like we're on time. We, uh, confound it. What's happened to my watch again? Here it is, Uncle Brian. Well, how? It's what Black Cat calls the sympathy method. Uncle Brian, you're just going to have to be more careful. Or somebody's going to take it from you. <laughs> hey! Hey! 